Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is part three of the OpenCV neural network self-driving car using Raspberry Pi. Now, in the previous two videos, we have looked at how we can collect the data and then how we can train it. And in this video, we are going to look at the implementation. So if I go over here, and this is the overview. So in the first part, as you can see, we did the data collection using the joystick data collection, motor and webcam modules. So we got the images folder and the log file. And using this log file and the images folder, we trained our data and we got the model.h file. Now in the last part, we are going to use this model.h file along with the webcam, which will allow us to make a prediction. And using this prediction, when we get the stating angle, we will send that angle to our motor to actually run our self-driving car. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Let me close this. So the final step is actually quite simple and all we need is one extra file, which is our run main. And we also need the webcam module and the motor module that we have seen before. So before we actually get into this, you need a few, uh, what do you call, installations. And the first one will be OpenCV Python. This you should have already done if you, are, if you have done the first part, which is data collection. But you ha if you haven't done that, uh, I would highly recommend you check out this tutorial. Now, most probably you will have to install it from source. So just follow the steps and make sure you are uh, installing 4.4 version. Then you can use pip install to uh, install the NumPy. I'm using this version, so you can use that too. And the most important is TensorFlow and make sure you are using this version. Now you can use a higher version than this as well, but it is not guaranteed that it will work. So for, for me, this is the version that worked properly. So you can use pip install um, on your Raspberry Pi and it should work fine. So after you have done all these installations, you can come back and you can see here, we are importing all of these modules and then we are importing our own modules, which are webcam and motor modules. Once we do that, we have, by the way, all of this I'm showing in on my PC, but uh, at the end of the day, this will be running on the Raspberry Pi. So then we are uh, uh, defining our parameters over here. So this is the stating sensitivity. Now, once we get the prediction, we are not sending the exact same prediction to our motor. We are adding, or you can say we are multiplying a value with this called the stating sensitivity, which will allow us to play around with how much effect does the actual prediction have on the uh, the motors. So we can use this. So if it's more than one, it will have more effect. If it's less than one, it will have uh, less of an effect. So this is for that. And then we have the maximum throttle. This is basically in percentage. So we are sending in 22% of the actual speed. And then we have the motor pins. So this is using our motor class. So these are the pin numbers we have connected our motors to. And at the end of the day, we have to load our, uh, what do you call, model, which we trained in the previous version. Now in Raspberry Pi, even if you put it in the same directory, it doesn't matter, you have to uh, give the complete path. So that's why we have starting from home, Pi, desktop, my files by robot and then the model file so that is about it so then we have our main while loop which will run again and again so here the first thing we will do we will get the image from our webcam module and here we are saying true because we want to print out the actual image now, this is not advisable once you have tuned the parameters. So once you are done with it, just put it as false. But for the first few runs, uh, I would recommend to keep it as true. Once that is done, we will convert it into NumPy array and then we will send it for pre-processing. So this pre-processing is pretty much the exact same that we did for our training. So if I go and open up our training, uh, not the training part, actually the utilities. 
So here you can see that in the step six, we had a function called preprocessing. So this is the exact replica of this. So you just copy and paste it here. And uh, because we use the exact same parameters or the processing uh, in the training part, we have to do exact same in the testing part. So that's why we have this. So once we have done the pre-processing, we will get it ready for the prediction and then we will just write model.predict and we will send in our image. Now we will convert this into a float value and then we can simply print it out. Now, since we will be looking at the uh, final value, we want to print out the final value, we will multiply it with the stating sensitivity. So this will give us the output and then we can simply send this to our motor module. And as you remember, the motor module requires the speed, the forward and backward speed and the, uh, what do you call the turning speed. So here we have the steering multiplied by steering sensitivity. And if it's going in the opposite direction, you can always add a minus. So for me, it was going in the opposite direction. So I added this minus sign. And at the end, we are going to, um, what do you call, add a delay of one millisecond. So once you are uh, confident about your performance, you can remove the print and you can make this false as well. And then it will be a little bit better in terms of performance because printing and showing or displaying the images frame by frame will take up some of the space. So. If you remove these, it will be performing better. So this is pretty much it for the implementation part. It's very simple. All you have to make sure is that the webcam module and the motor module files, they are in the same directory and you have the model version one. So let's go to our Raspberry Pi and see how that will work over there. So here we are in our Raspberry Pi and the first thing we will do is to go to the terminal. By the way, this is Raspberry Pi 4 and it is 4 GB RAM. So here we will make sure that we have the requirements fulfilled. So what you can do is you can write here pip install and whatever you need, for example, NumPy or TensorFlow. To make sure that we have it, I'm going to write Python uh, Python 3 and then we are going to import, let's say, OpenCV. So we will write CV2 and then we can check the version of it by writing print CV2 dot underscore underscore version. And there we have it. So we have 4.40 install. So you can do it for the rest of them, for example, the TensorFlow and the NumPy. And once that is done, then we can go to uh, our file. So here we have the folder uh, RPI robot. And here you can see that we have the motor module, the webcam module, and the, what do you call, the edge file which we used in the, which we produce in the training. And then we have the run main file. So I use the MU editor. So here you can see that I have opened that up in the MU editor. Why is it not maximizing properly? I'm not sure. Okay, anyways, so, okay. Let me increase it from here. So this is pretty much the code that we wrote down. And now what we will do is simply we will start it and see what happens. So again, the motor module and the webcam module are in the same folder. And this is the complete path of our uh, model file. So make sure this is the complete path. So you can get the path by clicking here and you can copy this and paste it here along with the model uh, file name. So let's run this and see what happens. Now, uh, here I have set this to true. It, so it is going to show us the image and it will also show us the print uh, of the stating angle. So let's run this and see what happens.
so we are getting a bunch of warnings as long as they are warnings and not errors it is fine and there we have it so now we are getting the numbers and we are also getting the image so you can see here the image is very what do you call uh, small and if I put my hand in front you can see the image is working fine and then we have our what do you call uh, float values as well for the steering so if I move it around you will see that the value changes so it goes to negative and then positive but again right now it's just on my table so if we go to our what do you call the path then it will give you the correct values of positive and negative so again you can tune this if you go back here you can tune the steering sensitivity and you can tune the maximum throttle so try to keep it as slow as possible now these motors they are not uh, that great so there is a limit to how slow you can go and uh, so you need some sort of uh, power to actually run them and that starts I think at 20% which is not that great so you don't have a lot of flexibility when it comes to uh, changing the motion of the uh, robot in terms of speed so and then you can change the steering sensitivity again how much effect do you want the uh, prediction to have on the motors so that can be done as well So this is pretty much it and uh, what you can do is you can run it several times and if you're not getting good results again you can add more data you can retune it and then you can um, try different parameters on the model and you can keep trying until you get the best results. So I haven't really added a lot of uh, other data but it will be interesting to see how you can add T junctions and U-turns and things like that. So if you do end up doing that, do share it so that we can see the results of that as well. So this is it for today's video. I hope you have learned something new from this series and we will we can keep adding more things to this. Uh, but this is Raspberry Pi and it is a little bit hard to um, maintain a good amount of performance if we keep adding more modules. So we will definitely continue this with uh, what do you call the Jetson Nano because it has much more computational power and you can also add the traffic sign module which is basically simply a har cascade method to detect traffic signs and it will detect whether uh, it's a stop sign or not and you can simply say that if it's a stop sign you send the motor command as zero zero so um, again if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you uh, haven't subscribed yet do subscribe and i will see you in the next one